We live, we love, we serve. We live, we love, we serve. Amen. Y'all sound good. Y'all sound good. Uh, turn with me this morning to the Gospel of Luke. Or turn your phones up. Turn them on. Search for the book of Luke, chapter 17. Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. Luke 17, verses 11 through 19 read is this. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give God praise except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Amen? Amen. Just really for the time that we have, I won't be long. I just want to talk to you about being blinded by blessings. Blinded by blessings. Won't you pray with me? Gracious God, we are here today a little more grateful, a little more thankful for all that you do for us, God. Each and every day you bless us, God, beyond our imagination, beyond anything we can fathom. We don't know why you do it, but yet you see fit to shine all that is you upon us each and every single day, God. We don't deserve it once again. Your love knows no limits. We ask that you show up today, God. Let us feel you on today, God. I ask that you grant me clarity of mind and precision of speech to speak your word, God. Somebody is here today to hear a word from you, God. So have your way and let it be so. And we will be so grateful and thankful. It's in your name we pray. And we say amen. 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 You may be seated. family, the topic today is blessings. At one point or another in your various lifetimes, you have been blessed by God. Maybe you expected the blessing, maybe the blessing you never saw coming came, and maybe you asked for it and prayed for it and you got it, but at some point in your life, you have been blessed by God. There are many definitions for the word blessing for this particular context, for this particular sermon. I'm going to go with this one that states that a blessing is simply God's favor and protection. So now that we understand what a blessing is, I need us to all think back to a time where God's favor and protection came over us. Whether we knew it was God's favor or not, God's favor was working for us to get us where we needed to be. And God's protection was keeping us and keeping all bad things away from us as we made our journey. So you can stand up and say that God's favor and protection were over me and God was blessing me. During my time on this point, I've been able to witness blessings on my life and blessings on the lives of others. And usually when someone gets a blessing, expected or unexpected, the reaction is the same. It is a joyous, a monumental occasion when one realizes that God is working in their lives and helping them succeed in whatever they are doing. Come on, I know we can all testify how God works and blesses us each and every day. You got that car that you really wanted or that job that you did not think you were qualified for because you felt you weren't qualified or maybe you got that passing grade even though you didn't study as hard or you, uh, we could go on for days with these things. We didn't do what we needed to do, but God still found ways to continue to bless us. And at some point in our lives, God has still blessed us despite us not doing what we needed to do. And usually when this happens, we still have the same kind of reaction. We get happy. 
we get excited. Tears may start to flow. We may say, thank you, Jesus. We may even hear, I won't he do it. Uh, the reaction is always the same. But, family, there comes times when these reactions always aren't immediate to the blessing that we receive. There are times where I have not seen these immediate happy reactions. And usually they come with one the, the person is not aware of the blessing that has just occurred in their lives. Mm. Y'all were agreeing with me about recognizing blessings. I need you to agree that sometimes we don't recognize the blessings that God blesses us with. All of us have been guilty at one time or another of not being aware of our blessing and not giving God the due praise. There have been times where we have prayed and begged for God to do things in our lives. And when those things happen, we treat those things as everyday occurrences. In some instances, the only time we talk to God about those things is when we lose them again. It is at this point that we can look back and recognize that was indeed a blessing from God. But sometimes we lose them because we're focused on the wrong things. We ask for things and God blesses us with them, but then we're too focused on other people's reactions to those things. We're too focused on looking good with our blessing instead of being focused on the one who blessed us. God is blessing us each and every day, if we are being honest, whether we see it or not, yet we don't always recognize or acknowledge it. But family, when is the last time you woke up and said, God, I thank you for this first morning breath? Lord, I thank you for the ability to inhale and exhale. Lord, I thank you for being able to get up, God. Lord, I thank you for being able to cook this food this morning. Lord, I thank you for doing everything each and every day to get me where I am. Lord, I thank you for clothes on my back, God. Lord, I thank you to be able to do what I want. God, I thank you for your favor and protection each and every single day. God is blessing us even if we do not realize it. Another time I see... Uh, us not giving God the due praise is when we become so consumed with the blessing that we forget about the one who blessed us with it to start. In this instance, we become blinded by the blessings. We become blinded by the blessings and are so focused on the blessings and all that may come with it, we cannot focus on the one who blessed us to start with. And when you do not focus or give praise to the one who gave you the blessing, you are really showing what type of person that you are. There's no thankfulness in your heart. There's no thankfulness in your spirit. Uh, you see, thankfulness is a conscious response that comes from looking beyond our blessing to the source of our blessing. I'll say that again. Thankfulness is the conscious response that comes from looking beyond our blessings to the source of our blessing. But when you are so caught up in your blessing, it does not even comprehend that you should look beyond what you have been blessed with. And once again, that's when we become blinded by the blessings in our lives. Yeah, you got a nice car, but don't forget what you used to drive and who made it possible for you to get where you got now. Yeah, that house that you got is big now, but don't forget about that first apartment you had where you were barely paying rent there. Yeah, you have nice shoes right now, and those Jordans are cool, but don't forget about the days you had to go to Payless and get the shoes that were on sale there. I know I'm up somebody's alley. Don't forget that even though you are blessed, your thankfulness is the key to the continuation of your blessing. There are many examples in the world of being blinded by blessings, but a good one that I'm going to hit on today is it comes from the forms of those who were in political power. And whether they realize it or not, they have been blessed with a position of power, and they do not seem to know how to use that power. Maybe it's due to the, 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 the ego and, and the, the maniacal imperial thoughts in their heads uh, that surround them. They are so consumed with that power that they are doing what they see fit instead of what is necessary for the people of the country. Whether they realize it or not, they have the power to really do some good power that should be used to make laws so that people just can't walk into a gun store, buy AR-15s, and proceed to go in public spaces, places, and commit mass atrocities. But instead of that, they want to focus their attention on how uh, black history is taught in some schools, making us think that slavery is somehow beneficial to us uh, chocolate-kissed folks using that power to make the rich richer and the poor poor. They are supposed to be doing things for the good of the people of this country, but only seem to be doing things for certain people of this country and themselves. 
along with other foolishness that I won't really get into. But here is a clear example of a group of people who have been blessed with something but do not show any signs of thankfulness and do not even show any signs of knowledge of how to use what they have been blessed with. We should always remember to show thankfulness when God blesses us in our lives, especially when our situations before the blessing used to have us on our knees begging God for a change. How quickly forget all the nights we spend crying to God, begging God, asking God to change situations, asking God to change things in our lives, asking God to change people, asking God to change something that we couldn't control. But yet, when those things have changed, we simply forget about the, those nights. We forget about asking God about those things. We forget about where we came from and how we used to be before God blessed us. There were these 10 men and they were stricken with leprosy. And leprosy, if you do not know, is a bacterial disease. And back then there was no cure for it. In Leviticus 13, you have the laws of leprosy. And in verse 45, it says, once a priest has deemed a man to have leprosy, A person who has the disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of their head hang loose. They shall cover up uh, their upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean, as they walk through the streets. He shall remain unclean as long as they have the disease. They are unclean. They shall live alone. Their dwelling shall be outside the camp. Leprosy was a social, religious, and political disease. And once you had it, you were forced into exile and a life of isolation. These laws were made against people who were afflicted with something they could not control. Does that sound a little familiar? Imagine being excluded from fellowship, companionship, and the security of the community that you grew up with, all because of something you could not control. Imagine having to wear clothes that basically told people to stay far away from you. Imagine having to walk in the streets and when someone saw you, you had to yell out, unclean, unclean, a leper is coming. Imagine that any place you enter was rendered unclean and anything that you touch was seen as dirty and diseased. Imagine what has to happen to the mind of one when you have leprosy, when everything you once loved and hold dear now turns its back on you. Imagine having to force yourself away from others, not because of your lack of love, but because you love yourself and you love them too much. Having to push your family away because of what you have. Having to force yourself to stay away from someone because society has forced you to think that you are no good for them. Pushing somebody away because even though you love them, you were afraid of what they might do to you. Rejection not because you don't love them, but because you love yourself. It says that lepers were sometimes driven away with stones and rocks because people were so afraid of them. Imagine looking at a loved one throw a rock at you telling you to stay away. When those who once looked at you with love, joy, and admiration now look at you with pity, fear, sorrow, and disgust. But all this should seem familiar because here in the U.S., those under the poverty line are treated like lepers were back then. The communities they are in reject them and act like they do not exist because the poor and the homeless make them look bad. So we have things like gentrification where they try to trick us into thinking they are helping the community by building new apartments. (laughs) Building new apartments, new stores. They put a nice Whole Foods in the middle of the towns. They put a nice Starbucks right there. But in actuality, they are trying to get the poor people and the homeless people out of the facility so they can make everything look good. When we as a community can't take care of our own who are struggling, those outside of the community will come, who we let in, will come and try to get rid of them. And not only do they live in communities that seem to reject them, but as a country, we reject them as well. When you have 11 or so countries that have free health care, but here, if you're poor, you're basically on your own. And if something happens to you, the bills are so high, you can't even afford to pay them. When everywhere in the country you're looked down upon because of your status, people turn their nose up at you because how you look and how you dress and the clothes you wear, I dare say that people are treated like lepers, constantly being rejected and making them feel less than human. But maybe they are treated that way because we are blinded by our own blessings in life. The blessings that we don't think about, oh, how can we do that? Can you imagine what it does to a person mentally when they are rejected, not only by the community, not only by the religion, not only by the people who they don't even know, but their own families and ones who raised them in the community, the ones they grew up with, and the ones that they might have even raised. 
Do you know what type of dark spaces and place the mind must enter when everybody they know and love have no choice but to turn their backs on them? Most people with this disease back then would have no choice but to remain in these places for the rest of their lives because there was no cure family. Can you imagine where they were in that space where they felt nobody cared for them, nobody wanted them, they were constantly rejected, constantly denied normal interactions with anybody else for the rest of their lives. They were forced to make colonies together on their own and live in groups and would position themselves near high traffic areas so that they could beg for food and money and anything that they can get. And that's where these 10 men were in that dark space, in those dark places, knowing that they had been forbidden to even enter their own town, see their own families, or even touch their own children. So there they stayed in the streets, being avoided, being ignored, and begging. But one day, I have to imagine, as they were begging in the streets, as they were being avoided, as they were shouting, unclean, unclean, those ten lepers had to hear a conversation amongst the people, a conversation about a certain carpenter from Galilee. The rumor mill had to be buzzing about what he was doing. They had to have heard that he healed many people of demons, that he made a paralyzed man walk, that he restored a man with a withered hand, that he raised a widow's son from the dead, that he healed a man with a legion of demons in him, that he fed 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish, and that he had already healed a leper and made him clean. And at this moment, I think a little bit of light had to shine through their darkness. At this point, they must have been feeling something they had not felt in a long time, and that might have been hope. Because of those dark places and spaces they were in, they had to have given up and know that there was no point of hoping about anything changing. They had to have been desperate for anything that could make their lives go back to normal, desperate for any sign of good amongst so much turmoil in their lives, desperate for a sign that things would get better, desperate to know that there was something out there other than the darkness that they were trapped in. They had to have the faith to think and believe that there was something better for them than where their lives were currently. In Jesus, they saw an opportunity to get their old lives back. In Jesus, they saw an opportunity to be with their family again. In Jesus, they must have seen an opportunity to be loved and feel love again. And I have to imagine maybe they were not the only lepers in the vicinity, and they must have tried to tell some other lepers about this man who would be passing by. But those 10 were the only ones who had the faith to believe and trust that Jesus could do something for them that nobody else could. Can you imagine there were other lepers who heard about these things but were so beaten up and downtrodden about their lives that they didn't even think it was possible that they could be healed? But these 10 show us that they leaned on their faith and they put that faith into action and went to go find the man that could change their lives. And as we know, having faith sometimes is all that you need to keep going. They may have heard about the woman who had the faith to think if she could just touch the fringe of his garment, she could be healed. Maybe they heard Jesus told her that her faith had made her well. Maybe they thought if they could just see Jesus, all would be well. They couldn't have thought that he would touch them because of their affliction, but maybe if Jesus could just see us and talk to us, then things would be better. The lepers go on their way. The lepers see, find, and see Jesus, and they shout, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And the text says, when Jesus saw them, he told them, go show yourselves to the priests, the one who deemed them unclean, so that the, he can reverse what he said. This is important because, once again, the priest was the pow- had the power to uh, deem them clean. So, of course, that's who the one, that's the one that they would first go see. And that means that once they were deemed clean, they could no, go, go back to being normal. So as he tells them, as I can imagine, because of the various complications with the disease that they were limping away. But as they began to limp, they had to get excited thinking about all that they were going to get back. They were going to be able to walk amongst the people again. They would not be avoided on the street. They would not be looked upon in disgust. And as they realized this, I'm sure that limp casually turned into a walk. And because the book says that they were cleansed, as they continued to think about all the good things would come, they will be able to go to church again. They will be able to eat with their families again. They will be able to converse with people, the community, again, without issues. They wouldn't have to scream, unclean, unclean. And as they thought about that, I'm sure that walk turned into a jog. 
And as they continue to think about all the good that was coming, they will be able to join their families again. They wouldn't be rejected anymore. Their loved ones wouldn't look down upon them with pity. One would be able to hug and kiss his wife and children again at the dinner table amongst all his peers. And at that point, I went, they went from a, a jog to a full-out sprint. Because sometimes when God has blessed you, you can't keep calm. you got to run and tell people. And I'm sure instead of shouting unclean, unclean, they were now shouting, I'm healed, I'm healed. But here we find issue once again. While that is all good and fine, but they were once again too busy thinking about other people's reactions to their blessing that they forgot to acknowledge the one who blessed them. And it's not just them. We sometimes do, too this, do, do this as well when we are worried about impressing people with what we have, trying to show off uh, and one up the next person, trying to come off as flashy, so worried about what other people think, so worried about other people's opinions that we aren't even focused on what we have going on. We are even worried about our own blessings, so worried about the thoughts and feelings and reactions of people when they are really irrelevant in our lives. But for some strange reason, we sit there and try to impress people and try to show off to people and try to show off our blessing instead of focusing on the blessing and the one who blessed us. We do this to the point where, where we are not only paying attention, we are not paying attention to the one who blessed us, but we aren't even paying attention to the blessing itself, just waiting on the reaction of the people that we want to impress. And I have to think that this is why the nine of the former lepers went off without saying anything. But amongst those running off, one stopped. And he stopped because he realized that he was healed. And he realized that the leprosy was gone. And he realized that his life would now go back to how it was. He recognized his blessing, but unlike the others, he did not get caught up in his blessing. And he did not get consumed by it. And he did not get blinded by all the good that would come from the blessing. He realized it happened through Jesus. And he ran back and showed us that the best thing that you can do when you get blessed is to fall down to your knees and give God some praise. And while the Bible says uh, all that he said was, thank you, I can imagine that when he fell to his knees, he said something like, if it had not been for God on my side, I don't know where I would be. People ignore me, but now I have been blessed. People ignore me, but now I have been healed. If it had not been for God on my side, what would I be right now? I thank you, God, for what you did to me in this moment. Sometimes it's good to just fall flat on your face and give God a little praise about what's going on in your life. We had 10 lepers who cried out in loud voices begging for help, but only one offered a loud praise in return. Jesus asked him, were 10 not made clean? The other nine, where are they? Uh, why do you think Jesus asked what happened to the other nine? Jesus is making a point about how we decide on to do something else, some other first step uh, other than praising God uh, instead. The first thoughts when they were here were not to give God praise. And we are guilty of this too, are we not? Have you have, ever had one of those, the first thing I'll do scenarios? The first thing you do if you won the lottery? The first thing you do if you didn't get the dream job? The first thing you do if you no longer had that chronic condition, the first thing you do if life got better, the first thing you do if you could change one thing about your life, I'm sure we do, and we plan these extravagant things, but where in your planning do you decide that the first thing I'm going to do after being blessed is give God praise? And maybe, maybe I dare say that is why your blessing might be delayed in the moment because God knows that your mindset about what you're going to do after you get blessed is not in the right place and not where it needs to be. When are you going to say, after I've been blessed, God, I'm going to get down on my face and give you some praise? When are you going to decide that? After I win the lotto, I give you some praise, God. After I get that new car, I'll give you some praise, God. After I get that new job, God, I'm going to give you some praise. After my life changes, God, I'm going to give you some praise. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. But the first thing I'm going to do once I've been blessed is give God some praise. Only one gave God the praise, though. See, we don't have just a story about 10 men being healed. We have a story about one man also being saved. Jesus tells the man, get up, 
your faith has made you well. And I'm sure, once again, instead of running and shouting, unclean, unclean, he was now shouting, I am healed, I am healed, and maybe even I am saved, I am saved. But imagine, once again, if the ten didn't come and step out on the faith and stayed where they are. Imagine if they had just sat there and not thought that if we go and see this man, our lives will change. Sometimes your faith is what is needed to get that blessing. Your blessing doesn't just depend on what God is going to do, but instead what you are going to do with your faith pushing you. So for those who are just currently sitting and praying, I encourage you to get up and let your faith push you in places, spaces, and situations that are necessary for you to receive the blessing that is waiting on you. Your blessing is coming, but you got to put in some work and lean on your faith. So FCBC, don't get down on yourself. Keep your faith because your blessing is coming. When everyone leaves, you keep your faith because your blessing is coming. When friends and family act funny, keep your faith because your blessing is coming. When those around you give up on you, keep your faith because your blessing is coming. When you get into those dark spaces and places, don't worry. Keep your faith because your blessing is coming. And when you ask me, Pastor Trey, how do you know my blessing is coming? I'm simply going to say this. I don't know what God is going to do, but I know what God has already done. And when I look back over my life, and when I think about how I got through college, it was because of God's blessing. When I think about how I got out of grad school, it was because of God's blessing. When I think about how I got out of those dark spaces in my life, it was God's blessing. And when you look back over your life, I'm sure you recognize those moments where if it had not been for God's blessing, you wouldn't be here right now. You're sitting there not feeling blessed. I need you to get up and stand up and realize that God's blessings have always come to you. Think about what I said to start. Blessings are just God's favor and protection. And I need you to realize that those are the two things that have you here right now. On those days in your mind where you don't feel blessed, I need you to realize that all, there's always some area in your life where you are being blessed. You didn't get that car, but you still got a roof over your head. Blessed. You didn't get that job, but you still got food on the table. Blessed. Things aren't working out, but you are still here right now. Blessed. God is blessing us each and every day, whether we know it or not. And it's because of those blessings that we are here right now. Don't get so blinded by your blessings that you can't give God a little praise for what God's done, what God is doing, and what God will do in your future. Give God a praise in advance because of what you know that God is capable of. God is capable of making the impossible possible. God is capable of changing things that we can't. Those are blessings in your lives each and every day. And it's about time that we start recognizing all the blessings that God blesses us with. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard because we, we want to look at the big things in life. We only look at the big blessings in life, not knowing that each and every moment we are blessed. Each and every moment you take a breath, you are blessed. Each and every moment you can see, you are blessed. Each and every moment you can move your limbs, you are blessed. Each and every moment you can think clearly, you are blessed. Each and every moment you can speak clearly, you are blessed. Each and every moment that you are present right now, you are blessed. There is no time, there is no space where you are not blessed. So I need you to get up and praise God because you know right now and you can say confidently that the Lord has been blessing me every day of my life. God is blessing me. I don't know about you, but God has done too much for me not to get down on my face, for me not to get down on my knees and give God some praise. Don't be blinded by the blessings. They're nice, they're good, but don't forget about the one who blessed you. Give God some praise for what God is doing in your life right now. Know that you are blessed. Yay. You are blessed. You are blessed. When it don't seem like it, you are blessed. When the darkness around you, you are blessed. When you have nobody, you have God, you are blessed. So you need to act like you are blessed today. Walk out of this building knowing that you are blessed. No matter what is going on outside, you walk out with a smile on your face.
because God is blessing you in each and every moment of your life. You are blessed. You are blessed. Oh, it's a blessing to be blessed. It's a blessing to know that God is there for you in your darkest moments. When you mess up, God is there to bless you. When you fall short, God is there to bless you. When you don't know where to go, God is there to bless you. When you don't know what to do, God is there to bless you. When things are confusing, God is there to bless you. You are here right now because God has been there in each and every moment, in each and every situation. You have been blessed, whether you know it or not, whether you acknowledge or not. And you know something, the beautiful thing is, even when we don't acknowledge it, even when we don't give God the praise we're supposed to, even we, when we don't act right, God still blesses us. So imagine how good life can be if you actually don't get blinded by your blessings and actually know where the blessings come from. It's all right to be happy about blessings. It's all right to get excited about those things. It's all right to show it off. But don't forget about the one who blessed you. Don't forget, as you leave this building, you take that breath. Oh, thank you, God. Don't forget to do those little things that matter each and every day. We may not think they matter, but the fact that God is doing them each and every day means that they are of great importance. So don't forget. Don't be blinded by the blessings of your life. God is present and God is here. And God will continue to bless us. But once again, if the blessings are good when you don't praise Him, imagine how great they can be when you just say, Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Come on, won't you stand on this morning? I encourage you all today to, as we prepare to leave this place, as you leave, I want you to just open your eyes in a different way. Look at the world in a different way so that you can recognize the blessings that you haven't been paying attention to. Recognize what God's doing in each and every moment so that you can be a little more grateful, a little more thankful for all that God is doing in your life. Once again, there are blessings that we ask for, blessings that God gives, but there are also the blessings that God gives without us asking. And those are the ones that we need to be paying attention to and being a little more grateful, a little more thankful to. Amen. 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 FCBC is a wonderful day to be blessed. It's a wonderful day to know who God is and to know God's love. So I ask that you stay blessed on the day and realize what's going on around you. Realize that God is continuing to bless you. God is continuing to be there for you. In your worst moments, God has been there. When you felt alone, God has been there. And in each and every moment, you have been blessed, even if it doesn't feel like it. There are people in here who don't feel blessed right now because things aren't going their way. Things aren't going how they thought they were going to be. But you're still here right now. And that in and of itself is a blessing. So FCBC, once again, remember, as we prepare to leave, don't be blinded by those blessings. Amen. Amen. Won't you pray with me? Gracious God, we are grateful today for you showing up and showing out in the best way that you know how, God. We are grateful today for all the things that we ask for that you bless us with, God. All the things that we need that you bless us with, God. But we are most grateful for all the things that we didn't even know we needed that you blessed us with, God. As we leave this place on today, God, remind us that it's okay to be excited about what you give us, God. 
It's okay to, to want to show it off to our neighbors, our friends, how the Lord has blessed us, God. But in the midst of that, help us to remember to always give you the thanks that you deserve, God. Because without you, God, we don't know how life would be. We don't know where we would be. It's one thing to go through life in the darkness, through trouble, through fire, God. But it's one thing to go through all that while being covered by you, God. And that in itself is a blessing. So once again, remind us not to be blinded by the things you present us with, God. Remind us to always give praise and to know that you are always there no matter what is going on in our lives. And we will do our best to live out our days with love, blessing others with the things you have blessed us with, living, loving, and serving in the best way we know how, and following the carpenter, God. It's in your name that we pray. It's in your name that we pray. And we say amen. 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 FCBC, y'all have a wonderful Sunday.